So now as we continue our look at the regulation of digestion, what we're now going to sort of shift our focus on is the regulation of energy storage. So we'll entitle the next flowchart, Energy Storage Regulation. How do we make sure we have enough energy within us and how do we store it in the correct form? The basic way to understand energy storage regulation is very simple. All we're going to need to look at is how much you consume and how much you use. So let's take a look at the following statement. If you, and this is any human organism, really any heterotroph at all, if you ingest more, more energy rich molecules than needed, okay? More energy rich molecules than needed. That's the key here, more than needed. You, can, you definitely need to consume these at a decently high rate, but if you do more than needed, your body has to do something with the excess. And the logical thing to do is to not just get rid of it, but to store the excess. So it makes sense to store it, find a nice place for it, and the first sites of the storage of this energy-rich molecules that you're consuming in excess, the first sites of storage will always be two very important parts of your body. And those will be any of your liver cells, because your liver is going to be very important in this idea of storage of energy, and also your muscle cells. Again, muscle cells do a lot of work, make sense to store high energy components that can be utilized to do cellular work within them. Now, what happens or how is this stored? When we have high energy molecules consumed at a higher rate and at an excessive rate, we store them initially as glycogen in both liver cells and muscle cells. So we've heard this idea before that glycogen is stored within the liver and within the muscle. And the reasoning is because there's an excess of energy rich molecules being ingested. So we have to store them a good nice form is called glycogen. But glycogen stores actually can get full. So what if we have glycogen, you know, in this nice high energy uh, compound that's stored very nicely in liver and muscle? Let's say the glycogen stores are full. What do we do then? And this happens all the time. What we do then is we're still consuming these energy rich molecules. What we do then is we store, we still don't get rid of it. We just say, you know what, let's just keep this too. We store the excess energy as a very nice molecule that some people hate as fat. And that fat is specifically stored in what is known as fat cells, more scientifically referred to as adipose cells, which make up adipose tissue. So that's the reasoning why we have a lot of this idea of fatness, of overweight. This is because you've completely filled up your glycogen stores and now you're even more excessive. You're more excessively eating these high energy rich molecules. And so then the body has to do something with this. It's not gonna just get rid of it. These are high energy molecules. Might as well store them as fat. Now again, your body's not uh, omnipresent. It doesn't know everything. So it's unbeknownst to itself that this fat, I know I understand the idea that fat, you know, we know it's bad. Why is our body storing it? Your body knows no better. It only does what you can control and it only responds to what you do and therefore it will respond to what you're doing here in ingesting more energy rich than needed by eventually storing it as fat. That's what it knows how to deal with this extra stuff and that's what it will do. Now, let's imagine the opposite scenario. This is really bad, we hate this, we try to burn this off, we try to get rid of it, but let's say the opposite scenario is true. What if you're consuming fewer energy rich molecules? In other words, let's change it up. Let's say if you're consuming fewer kilocalories than needed. Okay, if fewer calories than needed are being ingested by an individual, what's the situation then? What you're going to do then is you're going to use your stored energy. Because guess what? You're not getting enough ingested energy, but your body does store energy within its liver cells and muscle cells. So then what do you do? You utilize that because you're not consuming enough. Imagine this is basically a starvation state. When you're in a starvation state where you do not have enough chemical energy within you to be sort of building other stuff, you're gonna use whatever is being stored. And there's always some amount stored. And that's going to first initially 
be utilize, utilizing the liver glycogen that's being stored within every single one of us. We have almost all of us have the same amount of liver glycogen, and that's going to be used first if we're in a starvation state. Later on, then we'll utilize the muscle glycogen and also we'll utilize any stored fat. So muscle glycogen and fat is going to be used second. This is kind of the reason why, among many other things, fat is very hard to get rid of. It's not primarily used as a form of stored energy. And so it gets very difficult to make sure we target the fat in order to get rid of fat if, let's say, you're overweight. So that covers our look at energy storage regulation. We'll continue our look at this idea of energy by now focusing on the primary energy molecule that we all consume and all utilize within ourselves called glucose.